Okay, guys, uh, we're out here at the range with the uh, 1911 and uh, 762 by 25. We're going to uh, test it out today and see how she does. Uh, hold on just a bit. Well, uh, the firing aspect of it is uh, okay. Uh, obviously, uh, the uh, powder load we settled on was not near enough to uh, cycle the slide back, so we're going to have to uh, see about uh, either reducing the recoil spring down or uh, adding a little bit to the powder load. Uh, I didn't bring another spring with me this morning, so I uh, won't be able to do that. But uh, anyway, for first time out, uh, fairly successful. We'll. Uh, do a little more work on it and uh, see if we can shoot another video with it working properly. Uh, what I did was I did leave the uh, original 38 Super Spring in it. Uh, when I uh, bought the barrel it came with a uh, reduced uh, recoil spring in it. And I wanted to uh, make sure I, I wasn't overpowering that spring first. So uh, our first test on it was I'll rate it as a success even though uh, we weren't able to cycle the slide. So. Uh, we'll uh, change springs out and uh, possibly adjust our load a little bit and we'll see where we're at. did go ahead and bring you out to the target to show you where that thing's hitting at. Uh, you know, it's not bad considering I'm not taking a great deal of time aiming and, and uh, having to recycle the slide every time. So uh, basically new aim point every single time. But uh, shooting a pretty tight group, uh, one of the guys wanted me to uh, start showing you the targets and I told him the only problem with that was, was now I started to... Uh, having to aim at where I was shooting at so but uh, I'll go ahead and start showing you targets so you guys can see how these things are grouping when I'm when I'm shooting uh, anyway I'll uh, go ahead and add this in uh, toward the end so hope you do find this interesting we'll talk to you later and have a good all day. right everybody uh, welcome to the ranch Dr. Uptown here again uh, well as you saw from the uh, footage from the range uh, did have to hand cycle uh, <clears throat> And I, I believe that's, I believe it's not because necessarily I've got the round uh, loaded too weak. Uh, what I did when I built this gun was I left the uh, 38 Super uh, recoil spring in, which is stronger than the uh, spring they sent me with the barrel. And I did that intentionally. I didn't, I didn't want to have that uh, weaker spring in there and, and get carried away with the load and uh, damage the uh, frame and slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, what I'll call a best practice for any 1911 modification. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change out that uh, 38 Super recoil spring for the 12-pound uh, recoil spring they sent me. I believe the uh, 38 Super spring is a 19-pound spring. Uh, what I did notice when I was shooting was I was just getting, I was just getting if any at all, uh, cycle back. I was just getting a basically enough to put the thing into the half cock. Uh, definitely not enough to uh, go ahead and eject the round out and so that's why I was having a hand cycle. Um, once uh, 
once I get that changed out, I'll take this back to the range, use some more of the ammo that I've already got loaded, and uh, do some more test firing again. And that's just one of the things you get into when you're basically uh, creating a new, uh, you know, a new caliber for a, either an existing or a new gun kind of situation. You just kind of have to experiment and find the medium between the ammo and the and uh, what it take is what it's going to take to cycle the gun. Uh, like I say, I went from uh, an 8.6 grain average down to a 6 grain average, but by seating this bullet further into the cartridge, I effectively uh, removed uh, about half of the uh, functional space of the cartridge. So uh, that obviously causes increase in pressures and everything like that. Uh, like I say, it was a little hard to tell with... Uh, with what I was set up, uh, it was a little hard to tell. It, it just didn't seem quite as snappy as the regular toker off round uh, was. So I'm not sure if that was because the uh, recoil spring was absorbing some of that or because of my reduction in powder. But uh, like I say, I'm going to use best practice on this uh, and, and treat this just like uh, I was modifying this gun. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make one modification, take it out, test fire it. And then follow that up with the next modification. So in this case, I'm going to change out that uh, that recoil spring first, take it out, retest fire it. Uh, if we're getting our cycling in, then um, then we'll start messing with the powder load uh, for this cartridge. Um, I don't know what powder they use when they make this. It, it almost looks like a rifle powder. It's a a small rods versus a the fine chips like you usually have for pistol powder. So it may be a slower burning powder. It's hard to tell. I, don't, I just don't know what they're loading it with. And uh, with the, uh, when, I, when I reload, I use the same powder I just used to reduce load of it. So anyway, uh, for a first test though, I consider it very successful. I mean, it, uh, it shot, it shot well. Uh, it did seem to try to cycle. Um, I'll probably in turn, uh, watch this uh, footage that I uh, had up there again and again just to see if I see how much cycling I am getting or not. Like I say, there were several times that I noticed that I was at least at half cock, uh, but it definitely wasn't enough to eject the cartridge out, but the cartridges were ejecting very cleanly. So um, <clears throat> like what we talked about in the, uh, in the update video with the bullet in there, uh, they won't eject cleanly very well, but uh, they definitely they definitely do with hand cycling once the uh, the bullet is out of the cartridge. So we'll uh, try to uh, get this spring changed out and get back to the range at the end of the week. Uh, for now, i got to go ahead and uh, clean this up uh, because this uh, the uh, powder and primers that are used in the 762 by 25 uh, load are corrosive. So... Uh, that's the, one of the downsides with corrosive ammunition is, is uh, as soon as you get done firing it, you basically got to clean it up or it'll eat that gun away to nothing. Anyway, hope you find this interesting. We'll talk to you later. You guys have a good day. Bye.